forever. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. <clears throat> Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted of Satan. Make speed to help thy servants who are assaulted by manifold temptations. And as thou knowest their several infirmities, let each one find thee mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading will be taken from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. I'm 
something. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bull is seen in the cloud, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you. And every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth, God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 25, 1 to 9. And we'll be responsible. So you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, will and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The second reading, the reading from the first letter of Peter, chapters 3, verses 18 through 22b. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart 
and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to be thee, O Christ. Christ. And he was in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan. May the words of my mouth and meditation within our hearts, they always find acceptance in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> People often ask me, especially at this time of Lent, what was Jesus doing in the wilderness for 40 days or for an extended period of time? What was he doing? And the basic answer is praying and meditating. Praying and meditating. And it is always on this first Sunday in Lent that we hear the story of Jesus being in the wilderness 40 days, and yet being tempted by Satan. Although Satan would show up at other times in Jesus' ministry, yet the two most pointed times would be the time in the wilderness at the start of his ministry and in the Garden of Gethsemane before he faced the cross. <coughs> Satan would always pick the times that he thought that Jesus would be the weakest to come to him. Indeed, the reality of this is this, that at some point in our lives, every child of God is going to have to face the devil, the biblical symbol for evil. That is why at the very beginning of our Lenten period, we are asked to examine how our Lord dealt with Satan so that we might be better prepared for the temptations that life will surely bring upon us. And perhaps the first thing we should observe is that Jesus fought the devil in private. You see, we don't fight the devil in public, but in private. We may have to fight the devil's temptations in public, but the outcome of that public confrontation depends upon how we did with our private battle with Satan. The fight with evil is always about the control of our mind and our spirit. And that is a private battle. Before the devil can get you to fall publicly, he must first capture your mind and spirit in private. Distinguished writer and preacher, Dr. William Wat Watley, in his book, You Have to Face It to Fix It, <coughs> makes an interesting analogy when he notes that you can't fight a cold in public. The only thing you can do is spread a cold in public. Mm -hmm. The only way you can fight a cold is to go to bed and rest. Take the medicine you're supposed to take so the immune and defense systems in your body can do the real fighting. When you try to fight the devil in public, the only thing you do is spread the devil. You have to come apart and yield to God so that God's immune systems that are in you, that is, the power of God's name, the covering of God's blood, the promise of God's word, the anointing of God's spirit, God's goodness and mercy can come to your defense. You see, Jesus not only fought the devil privately, but he fought him in prayer. You can't outrun the devil. You can't outtalk the devil. You can't outthink the devil. You can't outtrick the devil. You can't out-politic the devil. No, no. You can't outrun the devil. You can't out-sing the devil. You can't out-read the devil. And if some of you try, you can't out-cuss the devil. And you can't out-shout the devil. You can't out-work the devil. Your only defense against the devil 
is to pray him, pray him out. Someone once said that the strongest demon in hell trembles when the weakest Christian prays. Remember a song we did at, on Ash Wednesday reminds us when we pray, we say indeed that the battle is over, the battle is won, all things happen through Jesus Christ, God's Son. The demons will tremble, they'll have to flee. All in the name of Jesus, there is victory. See, in the wilderness, Jesus was alone alone in deep prayer. And as the last phrase of this morning's gospel lesson points out, the angels came and ministered to him. You see, when we truly pray, we need to know that the heavenly host responds. Daniel prayed, and the angels gave hungry lions lockjaw. Elijah prayed, and both fire and rain fell from heaven. Paul and Silas prayed, and an earthquake shook their dungeons. The early church prayed, and an angel came and set Peter free from the prison. You see, when we truly pray, Jesus intercedes, the Holy Spirit anoints, and God Almighty sends angels to minister to us. Yes, Jesus fought the devil privately with the power of prayer. We've got to pray. But then Jesus fought him with persistence, persistence in his prayer. See, there is no such thing as a one-time knockout punch with the devil. That's where some of us make our biggest mistakes. We believe that once beaten, always beaten. You see, the devil only leaves us for a season. You can beat him today, and if you are not prayerful, he can come back the same test, the same temptations tomorrow, and smack you upside your head with the same thing. See, the devil is persistent. The only way you can beat him is to be more persistent than him. That is why Jesus was praying so earnestly, especially in the Garden of Gethsemane, where, as Scripture says, the sweat poured off him like great drops of blood. He was as persistent for us as the devil is against us. He was as persistent for our salvation as the devil was for our damnation. He was as persistent for our victory as the devil was for our defeat. He was as persistent for our elevation as the devil was for our degradation. And we know the rest of the story. We know that Jesus persistent won out. He persisted so much that the mob that would arrest him could not intimidate him. Judas's betrayal of him, Peter's denial of him, and the disciples' deserting of him did not embitter him. Herod couldn't humiliate him. Pilate couldn't condemn him. A cross couldn't break him. And yes, a grave could not hold him. He was so persistent that he now reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords, of our Savior and our God, in that place he has gone on to prepare for you and for me who love him. See, temptations will be around us at every station in life. But if our prayer life is earnest and persistent, then we, like Jesus, will be able to defeat the powers of hell and have God's angels come and minister to us. This is the wonderful time of year, Lent, to look at our personal prayer life and where it is weak, strengthen it. Where it is flawed, fix it. And where we have neglected it, be persistent in reviving it. We've got to pray. Yes, I know that sometimes it doesn't seem as if we are making progress. But if we persist in the name of Jesus, we shall get the victory. The victory over Satan, the victory over life, the victory that the Lord has prepared for us. And as a chorus to that hymn we love to sing, Yield Not to Temptation, reminds us, just ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Jesus Christ was persistent 
in his prayer. We must be persistent in our prayer life. And that's when we know Jesus will carry us through. Amen. 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 Now unto God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we ascribe what is most justly due, all might, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth this day, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us be for our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed, following your board, Creed 26, in your book of common prayer. We believe in one God, God the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, we will use those found in the bulletin or those on page 326, 328 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and everlasting God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer under thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love give grace O heavenly father to all bishops and other ministers especially archbishop of canterbury michael our presiding bishop william our bishop canon Wynne, and deacon Raddick that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all, all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, 
and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God, all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travel in a heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is a true saying worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Thus, if anyone sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. God's peace. turn this announcements over to Mrs. Maxine C. Harvey. Okay. <laughs> she stands for correct. <laughs> Good morning, Christ the King Episcopal Church. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Welcome. We are so glad that you've joined us online today. We hope that you feel a sense of connection as we share this time together. There are many opportunities to get involved with Christ the King, even remotely, to learn more about our membership, baptism, or confirmation, or to receive emails. Just visit www.christthekingnj.org or email ctk at christthekingnj.org. We will be happy to help you in any way we can. So let's not forget the parish directory so that we can stay in touch with each other during this pandemic and even after. Christ the King Episcopal Church presents its virtual Black History Program next Sunday, February 28th at 3 p.m. So please tune in to your Zoom. Christ the King Church office hours are open from 12 to 4 only on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and there is no in-person contact or meetings. Let's not forget Bible study, which is every Monday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, prayer time with Reverend Deacon Sheldon Raddix, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also coming up March 6th is the 237th Diocesan Convention. It is via Zoom due to the pandemic. Information is in the bulletin for you to register. Also, the Ordu calendars are still available. To arrange to pick up, please call the church office at 609-877-877. 2992 or email at ctkchristthekingnj.org. The cost is only $3 or you can contact Linda Anderson. Don't forget to send in your estimated giving pledge card if you have not done so. The information is needed urgently in order to complete the 2021 current church budget. Life Group the Life Group Ministry continues to explore new and interesting ideas in worship and spirituality. The Women's Group meets every other Thursday from 1 to 2.15, and the Men's Group meets every other Tuesday from 1 to 2.15, also on the church Zoom. If you're interested in attending either meeting or want additional information, please call Carolyn Booker at 412 337-2576. Let's not forget our clothing bin is now open again, and please feel free to drop in any clothing that you feel might not fit due to the COVID. Uh, the church received $75 donation for allowing the clothing bin to be on the church's property. There is a Lenten Women's Retreat 
beginning March 13th. If you are interested, please register. The link is in the bulletin. Don't forget the COVID-19 vaccination in New Jersey. The online portal enables eligible individuals to schedule an appointment when one is available. And it tells you if you experience an error and need support with the scheduling system or need to correct an error, you can complete an online form at covid19.nj.gov forward slash vaccine help or call 855-568-0545 for phone support from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. It is very urgent and a need that we are vaccinated as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. This winter, remember, don't forget the COVID-19 precautions. And it tells you everything in the bulletin, especially if you're going into public building or a warming shelter to stay warm, don't forget to wear a mask, bring hand sanitizers and stay at least six feet from others. In our bulletin always, we have excellent articles. So the first bullet uh, article in there is what part of Africa did most enslaved people come from? It gives information, so please read that. If you are interested in signing up for anti-racism training online, there is information regarding the schedule as well as a link for you to go to. Don't forget regarding any fraudulent emails that you may receive. The FBI is warning about a rise in phishing scams fake emails attempting to secure your personal or financial information from criminals taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic. So please make sure that you read that information as well. Another great article, since this is Black History Month, submitted by our Lieutenant Colonel Ted Cannon, retired on the five African-American women who made United States military history. I read the article in detail and it is excellent information that you also should read. Also um, submitted by our senior warden, Emerson Cooper, forgotten all female black World War II battalion. And this uh, gives also great information about the women who have been and fought in the military, which is black history for us. Also submitted was another article on shame, black history by Emerson Cooper. And this talks about um, Isaac Woodard Jr., an African-American World War II veteran decorated for courage, um, however, was beaten by South Carolina police until he was blind only hours after an honorary discharge from the military. So please read that information as well. Another great article for Black history on Barbados, the first Black slave society. It is an excellent article that many of you may be surprised regarding the information. Our final uh, um, article also was the creator of modern security systems, Marie Van Britten. It is interesting because people do not realize African-Americans made this country and have donated, uh, invented and received some credit. Others did not receive credit due to the fact that many times there was no money for patents. So please remember also to look at that beautiful Black History fashion show at the end of the bulletin. Those ladies look absolutely fabulous in that beautiful garment. So Christ the King, as we have now entered into the Lenten season, let us remember what Joel chapter two, verses 12, 13 states. Yet even now says the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. 
So may the God who loves us unconditionally help us during this 2021 Lenten season to repent for our ill thoughts, words, deeds, and come back to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a safe and blessed week, Christ the King members. Amen. Thank you so much, Max. Greatly appreciate it. One additional uh, notice I'd like to bring up from the Commission on Black Ministry in our diocese is that coming this uh, Saturday, the 27th, there is a special Zoom forum. It's called I See Something in You. What it's about is encouraging the gifts of ordination ministry. So the hope is that if we have folks who may be interested, just wondering what the process is for being ordained in the Episcopal Church and the diocese, uh, this uh, forum would help to explain that. It's going to be led by Canon Connie White and also uh, our, our deacon, Deacon um, Brannix, will be making a presentation at that forum. So that's Saturday, the 27th, it's coming this coming Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, we will have Senior Warden send out a uh, register with the link. Okay, so that's this Saturday. Just continuing our prayers, of course, as we start, as always, with birthdays. And we have this coming week of uh, birthdays. Rahima, December, and Dr. Clinton Scott. Watch over thee, your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up should they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passeth all understanding, abide all the days of their life. And all this we pray and ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's also pray for those who may be celebrating anniversaries this week. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants who are celebrating the joy, the love of an anniversary. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. And this we pray and ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray, especially for all of the people in Texas and everywhere who have no heat, Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation. Watch over all your people in the cities of Texas and throughout this country that are struggling in any way because of the weather and other natural disasters. Continue to bless them, O Lord, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, that may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help. This we pray and ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us also pray for all of the members who are unemployed. Heavenly Father, remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to pray for our President Joseph Biden and for our Vice President Kamala Harris and those of our governors on the the state and the neighboring states during this pandemic. O oh Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care that being guided by your divine providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to our President Joseph of the United States and the governors of this state and the states nearby, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness 
and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy faith and figure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. And let us pray for peace among the nations. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray for the whole human family. O oh God, you make us in your own image and redeem us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggles and confusion to accomplish your purpose on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. This we pray and ask always through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. And finally, let us pray the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we will receive. It is in pardoning that we will be pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
and the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be upon you this day, remain with you now, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Great week, everyone. Me too. Thank you. Morning, yep. everyone. No, no, no hallelujahs in Lent. Very <laughs> <laughs> good. I said, I hope I have a tape recording this thing.